Welcome back everybody, Todd here. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Today we're gonna to talk about breaking in the motor on a brand new dual sport motorcycle. Laura and I purchased a couple of motorcycles this fall. I got the Kawasaki KLX 300 and she got the Honda CRF 300L and we've been breaking those in over the course of December since the weather's been really mild here in Michigan. So we're gonna talk about the whole process of breaking those motorcycles in and then I'm gonna complete the first service on my KLX 300. So come on with me and let's jump into this this video. So here's what the owner's manual says about breaking in that Kawasaki KLX 300. From 0 to 150 miles don't exceed 4,000 RPMs. From 150 to 250 miles don't exceed 6,000 RPMs. And from 250 miles to 600 miles ride moderately. So that's what the manual says. Now you go out to the forums and you've got guys saying, ah, I don't believe the manual. Uh, you know, I bought mine and I've been ripping it since the day I got it home and I've never had a problem with it. Well, that's great. But what the manufacturer says, probably a good idea. So that's what we did. And um, it doesn't take that long, but you know, you look at that first that first stretch is the toughest to keep it under 4,000 RPMs because you're really talking about going up to about 40 miles an hour. So we just rode dirt back roads and stuff like that to get the miles in. Uh, but I think it's important to just follow the book on that. Now, the Honda manual, here's what that says. It says riding precautions break-in period. During the first 300 miles of running, follow these guidelines to ensure your vehicle's future reliability and performance. Number one, avoid full throttle starts and rapid acceleration. Two, avoid hard braking and rapid downshifts. And three, ride conservatively. That's it. So they're talking about a 300 mile, take it easy, don't rot it type of a break-in. We both followed the guidelines in the Kawasaki ma uh, manual for the RPMs, and so that's how we went about breaking these bikes in. You can do it however you want. So just to kind of give you a little background on the break-in process and how we did it and what the manuals say. Okay, moving on. Let's jump into the first service. And there's a big difference in the manuals on first service as well. What the Kawasaki manual says to do at a first service and what the Honda manual says to do at the first service. So again, let's take a look at that. Then here, according to the owner's manual, are the maintenance requirements. You can see there in column one, that is your first service at 0.6 or 600 miles. You're gonna check the idle speed. You're gonna check the throttle control system to see that it doesn't have too much play in the throttle uh, fuel system. I mean, what does that really mean? As long as it's not missing. Cooling system, make sure that you're topped off with your fluids. Then you're gonna move on. <clears throat> you're looking at the clutch, the clutch adjustment. You're gonna change the engine oil and the filter. I'm here. You're gonna just go through, check your spokes to make sure nothing's loose. Um, you're going to look at the brake system. You're going to do uh, effectively check the brake levels, make sure there's not too much play. You're going to come over here, and I'm in column one, and you're going to check the steering to make sure you don't have play in there. The, the bearing's not going bad on you. And then the last thing is you're going to check the condition of all the bolts and nuts and fasteners. You're going around the bike and check that. So that's your first service. So to complete the first service on my Kawasaki KLX 300, I'm just gonna jump into the different tasks and we'll talk about it as we go. So come on and let's jump into it and start out 
with an oil change. On page 91 of the owner's manual, it gets into the whole process of changing the oil. Not a big deal, but go ahead and look through this owner's manual and try to find a part number for the oil filter or the O-rings. Does not exist in here. You're going to have to get it from the dealership or buy a service manual for over a hundred bucks. So uh, there's your part numbers. You might want to write those down. Here's the oil that they're calling out in the manual. So I went ahead and purchased it from the dealership. So uh, I've got the 1040 full synthetic, the ultimate performance uh, four stroke engine oil for motorcycles. So you're gonna need more than one uh, quart. They say 1.1 quarts. So it'd be a good idea to have some oil on hand anyhow, just in case, you know, uh, you end up coming up a little bit low at some point and gotta add some more. So that's what I'm using. Got the OEM uh, filter. Let me get that auto focus to work. There's my part number. So all right, let's go put it on the bike. Start out with a 14 millimeter socket to drain the oil. So I've got my oil catcher here. Your drain plugs down here. Pretty easy to break loose. Just try not to drop it into your oil container. Like I just did. Got it. And then we'll let that drain. Good idea to come over here and pull your oil cap here. Give it a little bit of incentive to drain. And let's see, we're doing, we're using a eight millimeter here. <clears throat> and we're gonna take off the oil filter. Holds your hand tight. So there's a spring in there. So you kind of want to be careful that you're ready to handle that. Take out the bolts, stick them in a magnetic pan there. Soft rubber mallet. Here we go. Okay, it's coming up. Pay close attention to the way it came out. Your filter. Pretty dirty. Bring us in there. I'm gonna go get a clean paper towel. Take my spring out. Stick this in there and clean everything out. Checking the O-ring. Everything looks real good. There's no metal shavings anywhere. Okay, we're ready to start putting this back together. So, we're going to take our new filter. We've opened up our oil. We'll go ahead and just dress this a little bit with some oil. Then I'm going to take some grease. And I'm going to 
take a kind of a generous glob of grease and I'm going to stick it right here in the center just glob a little bit of grease on there so that I can put that spring in there and that spring is now held right in place that out that's going to allow me to take my oil filter get it lined up carefully and then stick it back in there yep everything's looking good I'm lined up good yep then I'm going to take my bolts Carefully get them threaded so I'm not cross threading anything. Hold that. I can feel the spring pushing back so I know that I'm everything's seated properly. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my torque wrench. Okay, we've got it set for 87 inch pounds. And okay, we're good. We're torqued up, and that's back in place. Okay, everything looks good. I've got my torque wrench, got that set. I've inspected the crush washer and everything looks good there there's really no need to be concerned with changing that out all right <clears throat> you heard it i'm there i'm just gonna double check it All right, everything's good. The torque spec was <clears throat> 11 pounds on the plug, by the way. So here we go, we got one quart. Let's put her in, slowly but surely. I forgot to mention that I had run the, I had run the motor to uh, warm up the oil in there so it would all come out of there prior to changing it, but I didn't want to make you wait through that. While we're running that, I'll show you how many miles I have on it. Supposed to, check, supposed to change the oil at 600 miles. I'm at 607, so I think I did pretty good. Okay, wrapping up this oil change, got the bike just where we want it. When I set it up straight, it's just a little bit below the top line. That's where I like to run it at. Here's how much on the second quart it took, all the way down to here. So, you know, don't believe the manual. You just gotta go ahead and start slow and keep adding and keep adding that's all i did is kind of stair step my way up to getting it right where i want it on that line so oil change is complete i still have a pretty decent amount of oil here so that as time goes on if i find that i need to add a little bit i got some on hand so okay moving on we've got our eight millimeter a lot of these bolts are gonna be eight millimeter. And I did find that this one, I tightened this one earlier. But just making our way around the bike, wherever you see an eight millimeter, just touch it to make sure it's snug. If it's got any give to it, then you're gonna go back to the torque specs. But I'm not going to bore you with this, but I am going to go all the way around the bike and check every single nut and bolt 
on this bike just to make sure everything's tight and then I'll be back. Okay, I've gone all the way around the bike and I've checked every one of the nuts and bolts and fasteners and there definitely were quite a number of them that were loose. So you wanna take the time to do this, that's for sure. So next we're gonna move on to the chain and just make sure that we've got the proper amount of slack on that chain because that's gonna be really important here on this first service. Okay, as part of your service, you're gonna to wanna to check the slack on your chain. According to the owner's manual, you want to do it right in here. Check it on the bottom. Just take a tape measure, stick it right here flat against the bottom of the frame here, and then push it up. Measure from the center pin. So I am at, when I push it up, without really reefing at it, I'm right at one inch. If I push it down here, then I'm right at about two and an eighth, two and a, yeah, right around two and an eighth. So if I'm one inch to two, eh, it's really more like two and a quarter. So I got, really I'm looking at about one and a quarter inch play here. So that's perfect. It's supposed to have between 1.2 and 1.6 inches. So that is looking good. You just want to make sure that it's not too tight if anything, you want it a little on the loose side, but keep it between the tolerances and it'll walk you through how to adjust this chain if you need to. But right now, this is good. Now I did go through and clean and lube this at 300 miles, but I'm gonna go ahead and do another clean and lube on it here at 600 miles. Just to show you what I'm using to clean the chain, I'm using a Maxima and it's the the clean up the chain, chain cleaner, so Maxima. And then the chain lube, I'm using the chain wax from Maxima. Um, two great products, I found them to be super uh, easy to work with, they do a great job, price points fair. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. I'm not gonna bore you with going through the process of cleaning this, there are plenty of those kind of videos out there. Uh, I'll just uh, get this cleaned and lubed and we'll move on. Just a quick look after the chain's been cleaned and lubed. Beautiful, beautiful. Unfortunately, it won't stay that way for long. One ride and it'll be full of it again, but you gotta do it, gang. You gotta keep, uh, keep these things cleaned and conditioned. Another thing you wanna keep your eye on is your coolant. And if you look at where that's at, I'm pretty happy. I'll probably add just a smidge, but uh, coolant level's looking good. Uh, but I will add that just to top it off and keep it just a hair below the line. And that's what I did on the oil too. I brought it in and kept it just a hair below the maximum. I guess a quick side note, I did uh, put the motorcycle up on this bike stand lift and uh, that thing is a godsend. If you don't have one of these for servicing your bike, yeah, you're gonna wanna get one. This uh, particular one is a Viver. I did a video on it, a review video. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. One of the things that you're gonna wanna check is steering play, just to make sure that there's nothing loose or nothing's going on. Once you've got the bike like I do up on the stand, you've got the weight off of that front forks, then you can check it just to see if there's any kind of a, any play in that at all. And, you know, there's not, this thing is snug as a bug in a rug. Okay, so I just finished up checking all the spokes. Um, what I do is take a bottle of bug slide, put that on a shop rag, go through, clean up the rim itself, clean up the nipples, on the spokes so you can get a wrench on there and then just go through one at a time check each one of them with a spoke wrench just to see if they're loose uh, i didn't come across a single one that was loose so you're here you're not trying to tune this up or anything you're just really looking for a loose spoke uh, something that might jump out at you so make sure that they're all snug and in my case they were I've done the front and just finished up the rear everything's good so just a, a good safety precaution to check all of that out especially at that first service 
Okay, going through your brakes just to make sure everything's good to go. It is pretty straightforward and simple. I mean, you've been riding the bike for 600 miles. You know if you've got too much play up here at the brake lever. You know if this is feeling loose or squishy. Um, so, you know, start there. If you need to make some adjustments, do it. Um, a big thing is to just turn the bike on and really pay attention to, you can see the you can see your brake light right here. How much pressure does it take before that brake light comes on? You want to make sure that you don't have to jam that thing all the way down, you know. There is an adjustment here. If it's if it's not coming on right away, you know, you need to adjust that. But mine's good, you know. It takes just a little bit of pressure to turn that, to get that brake light uh, coming on. Checking the levels on your uh, brake fluid. Here's your rear brake reservoir right here in between this triangle. It's right there. You got a top line, bottom line. Mine's sitting just below the top line. It's good there. It's a no brainer up top. You know, you've got the sight glass right on the front brake reservoir. So, um, you know, going through the brakes, pretty easy to check, but super important. So on both your brake and your clutch lever, on these pivot points right here, I like to take just a little bit of pneumatic uh, oil and get that in there. And then, you know, get a little bit in there on the, uh, on the contact point too, because that stuff can rust in there. And you want these things to operate nice and smoothly. It's pretty easy to just kind of keep these lubricated. But, um, yeah, you can use just regular motor oil if you want. I like that pneumatic oil. It's easy. You can see it comes in a squirt bottle. It's easy to get that in there where you want it, you know. So use what you want. But, you know, hit top and bottom on that. And just, uh, you know, work it in. So, both sides. So, a couple of things that we have to check yet. Your throttle snaps right back immediately. There's no drag in it. Everything's good there. Clutch. Clutch lever feels good. Definitely no issues. So, really, everything, um, you know, gone through my shifter. Just... Making sure that you're checking the play on all of this stuff, going right through it, and making sure everything's just in good working order. Okay, we're going to go right down the list here and make sure we completed everything that's listed in the owner's manual on a first service. So we're idle speed. I checked the idle speed. It was good. The throttle control system, the play is smooth. There's no drag on it. Um, fuel system is fine. The... Cooling system, we checked our coolant levels, everything's good there. I checked all the fittings, made sure nothing's leaking. Clutch operation, engagement, clutch lever play, everything's good. Engine oil and oil filter done. Spoke tighten and rim run out. I've gone around the spokes, checked all of them. I didn't find any loose spokes at all. Brake system, um, brakes are working fine, no issues there. Checked our fluids, everything's looking good. Uh, brake operation, yep, everything's working, all the brakes are working, both front and rear. Steering play, we checked that. Yeah, and then the condition of the bolts, nuts, and fasteners. I've been through the whole bike, there were quite a few loose bolts and screws but everything's been tightened up no no issues whatsoever so that really completes this first service now the dealership wanted 225 dollars to do what i've just done it's probably taken me about an hour and a half um to do what i'm doing the whole service but that's largely because i'm filming it and i'm moving lights and cameras and all that kind of stuff uh, but hey, I'm not knocking the dealership. The, there's a place for the dealership, that's for sure. But you know, if you have a little bit of mechanical aptitude and the tools and you want to tackle this yourself, I wouldn't be afraid to do that. 
I now know that every single bolt was checked. I know that you know everything was done, and I lubed, uh, you know, I cleaned and lubed the chain, which they would not have done as part of that. So yeah, I did even more than what the manual calls for for a first service. But you know, you just want to keep an eye on the bike and make sure that you're uh, taking good care of it, especially that first 600 miles. You know, tighten everything up. There's more to a first service than just changing the oil. That's, I think, one of the things that I wanted to stress, that I don't see any videos out there talking about first service. I see a lot of guys showing you how to change the oil. Uh, well, do a little bit more than just change the oil. That's my uh, words of advice. Well, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. I appreciate you tagging along. Do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps me out. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and then come on along. We'll have plenty of additional dual sport motorcycle content, road bike content, uh, a lot of outdoor activities, DIY projects, and more. So we'll see you on the next one.